French President Emmanuel Macron has demanded the release of the ousted Nigerian leader Mohamed Bazoum, who was detained on July 26, 2023 after a coup led by Abdul Rahman Kiani. Meanwhile, Nigeria's President Tanubu has declared he's the reason ECOWAS hasn't struck in Niger yet, saying he's been holding them back, as he sends another delegation of Islamic ulamas who visited him in the presidential villa back to Niger Republic for further negotiations. According to the Nigerian Minister of Information, Mr. Tanubu wants to explore diplomatic options to resolving the crises but like I said, nothing is off the table. Growing impatient with the pace of things in Niger, as regards the immediate release of Bazam by all means possible and recounting the painful loss of Burkina Faso and Mali, Macron lashed out saying, if we hadn't got involved with operations Serval and then Barkhan, there's no doubt Mali and Burkina Faso will no longer exist, and I'm not sure if Niger will still exist. Basically, Macron is implying that French soldiers in those countries were the reason the countries weren't overrun by terrorists. But, the countries and their citizens have a totally different story to tell, as they continue to allege to the contrary that it was the presence of French soldiers in their countries that fueled terrorism. Whatever the case may be, Macron obviously can't keep quiet anymore. The delay in activating the proposed military intervention is unsettling not just him but the collective West like there's no tomorrow. Because, as you well know, the more the delay, the less likely it will happen, and that means Niger is gone for good from the prison of the colonial masters. See why he is losing his cool now and demanding that his guy Bazam be released immediately before it's too late. Like never before, Echoes is under unimaginable pressure to act now and make the colonial masters happy, or risk having empty plates at the colonial dinner table. The next few days and weeks will be very very interesting. More update on the just concluded 15th annual BRICS summit. Barely 24 hours from the just concluded 15th annual BRICS summit, Brazil has proposed the Chinese Yuan as trade guarantee to Argentina as the dollar's influence declines drastically in that country. So, in order to reduce the trade risks associated with the dollar, all exports headed towards Argentina from Brazil will be conducted with the Chinese Yuan amidst Argentina's acute dollar shortage. At the same time, Vladimir Putin has also just announced BRICS Games 2024 and invited all BRICS member states, to the Apocal event that'll be the first, since admitting six more countries into the bloc. Extending invitation, Putin said Russia will be happy to welcome BRICS athletes during the 2024 Games of the Future, which will feature hybrid disciplines in both traditional sports and popular video games. The sporting event is slated for June 12-24, 2024. In the West's sanction war on Russia since the start of the Russia-Ukraine war, Russian sportsmen and women haven't been spared. They have been publicly humiliated and altogether banned from nearly all global sporting events, whilst seizing the opportunity of such events to celebrate and glorify Ukraine and promote their course in that country. With the new face of BRICS, Russian sports personnel may no longer be needing Western sports establishment from the look of things. What happens in 2024 at the BRICS Games in Kazan, will set the tone for where the future of sports in our world lies in the hands of those, who would deploy sports as a weapon of choice against their opponents or those who will separate politics from sports, obey the rule of law and respect people's right to personal opinions. As the BRICS summit got underway, the legacy media and their talking heads could swear that BRICS was not ever going to be able to admit any new member, because according to them, BRICS was too weak, too divided to forge any more alliance past where they were before the summit. When the big announcement came, the shock on their faces was legendary. With all the pessimistic vibes they tried to give out, it now appears the BRICS nation are even running faster than many had anticipated. Just that they managed to find a crazy way to keep it all quiet and just show up with actions, something I believe the West and their media goons are still scratching their heads to comprehend. Welcome again, to the multipolar world, may Africa win, God bless Africa, and God bless Russia.